this one? <laughs> All right. Ah. So uh, I, uh, I, I apologize. I studied French in school. So just be désolé if I uh, start speaking French instead. Um, I'm over here. Okay. So I work at uh, Right Point in Boston. We're uh, an agency, and I also organize uh, these two meetups in Boston, <coughs> Swift Coders Boston and Learn Swift Boston. So if you're ever in town, uh, you can Google these and, and uh, come and say hi. And I want to tell you about an app that I wrote and that I'm still working on uh, in my spare time called JuggleBot. It's a juggling simulator for iOS. And I'll just show you very quickly what it looks like. So this is JuggleBot, and it uh, lets you simulate juggling patterns, and there's a, a notation to juggling patterns, so you can type in different numbers and uh, juggle different things. So I can put in big numbers. So that's what the app does. Uh, and it also runs on watchOS. So that's, that's what I'm uh, talking about, just to give you a little preview. Um, so I, with, with uh, running the meetups, I get a lot of people who are starting out who are new to iOS and Swift, and a lot of them ask me, how can I learn to make an app? And uh, what I usually tell them is, Go find an app that you like and make a better version. Or maybe not a better version, but make the version that you want to see in the world. So, you know, there are so many apps out there, you're probably not going to have an original idea because they've all been done. But maybe you can, maybe you can bring some little piece of your experience, something from your background that will put a nice twist on it. That's the thing you want. And especially for learning, I think that's a really great way to go and a great way to stay motivated and keep working on your own project. So this is my inspiration for this app. It's another juggling app. Yes, there's more than one. Uh, so this is an app that's in the store called iJuggle, and it works pretty well. It's pretty popular. There were some things that I didn't love about it, uh, but my main reason for doing this was that it was not updated for iOS 11, I think, when they dropped 32-bit uh, support. And I was, for like two weeks, I was worried that it wasn't going to get updated. And so I went and started making my own, and then it was updated. But I kept working on my own because it was fun. <laughs> uh, why am I interested in juggling? So these are my parents. Uh, and you, you might have seen the, uh, the joke in the meetup description. And I'm told that this does not work uh, in Spanish. Uh, but uh, in English, there's this expression, running away to join the circus. Mm. So circus, circus. It's a whole thing. Explain jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I've always uh, been sort of integrating my interest in juggling and my interest in Computers. Even before I was uh, doing programming, I was doing fun uh, like computer graphics things, and uh, so I made uh, I made these when I was very young. And so this brought about this question for me, which was, how can I learn to notate a juggling pattern? Because it turns out there is this whole system of notation, and I realized I, I knew little pieces of it, but I realized I was going to have to really understand it to be able to make this app. So I started. Googling around, and I think this is a great approach if you're trying to make an app with, you know, for, for some topic that you really like, go and learn as much as you can about it. So I poked around online, I came across these videos from a guy named Colin Wright, who uh, you might have seen on Numberphile, uh, which is a great uh, YouTube channel, and he describes some of this uh, math behind the juggling, and so I started watching those and started getting into it. And I thought I would share uh, just a little bit of how that works, because I think it's kind of cool, and I think it's interesting to see how we can learn notation, and then from that notation, <coughs> figure out new ideas, discover new things. Um, and then from there, if we want to talk more about juggling, we can do that, or uh, some of the programming stuff, uh, happy to do either. So very quickly, uh, these are uh, should warm up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got better at juggling when Swift came along because it's slower to compile than Objective C. Uh, okay, so we'll do more of that later. So these are the rules. This is a simplified set of rules, and from these rules, we can start to figure out a way to talk about juggling patterns. So the first rule is that the hands are fixed; they don't cross over. So all this business is illegal. We have to stay left, right, left, right. Uh, and the second rule is that the timing is fixed. So we're always on a metronomic beat like this. So not, let's see if I can do something that's not that. Not that. Uh, and then the hands alternate. So it's always left, right, left, right. Not <coughs> like this. Uh, so from those rules, we can try to diagram what's happening. So if you imagine I'm going like this, moving through space, and then photographing from above mm -hmm. the lines that the balls leave uh, moving through the air would look something like this. Get this Okay, so we see that, uh, so the, these are the two hands left and right, and time is going this way. So we throw a ball up, up, and then while it's in the air, this hand throws a ball and then catches this one, and then uh, while that one is in the air, this hand throws the ball and catches this one. So if we look uh, closely at the pattern, notice that I'm not going around in a circle like this. That's actually a lot harder. So we're just going, if you watch uh, the white one, and it's making a, a, an infinity sign. And so this is the sort of the basic juggling pattern. And if you notice the count of the white ball, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we can see that on the diagram. We take the red ball, we throw it here, and then one, two, three beats later, we throw it again. Right there. So that's a time of three. So it is three beats from when it is thrown to when it is thrown again. And that's the number that we care about. Uh, so let's look at four balls. Let's do. Okay. Can't see the ones in my left hand. Let's go over here. Yeah. So notice that it's just this and this at the same time. They never cross. <laughs> Uh, but the hands are still alternating, and they're still staying on their own side, and the timing is still fixed. Right. So what does that look like? So we do the same, uh, we'll start here, and remember <coughs> two just going in one hand, so we can do each hand independently. While the ball is in the air, we catch and throw the other one. So, ball is in the air. Let's do. Uh, let's see. We catch and throw the other one, and then we catch the first one, and then the second one. And they go like this. Is there a Spanish version of the American or English expression "leapfrog"? Yeah. It's a great expression. You should translate it sometime. Um, okay, so uh, so they are leapfrogging over each other, and the other hand is doing the same thing, but remember it alternates. So we are right. That's hard to do. Okay, so it's the same thing but shifted in time. So everyone is like this. Um, feel free to ask questions 
if you have them as we go, because this stuff can be a little confusing. So if we look at the timing for this, we had three before. Let's look at this one. So we have a throw here, and then a throw again of the same ball here. So that's one, two, three, four. So we had three balls here, and the count was three. We had four balls here, and the count was four. I can't juggle five balls, <coughs> but if I could, it would be five. It turns out that when you're juggling a number of balls, the number of beats for each ball when it is thrown and then thrown again is the number of balls. So for three, that was three. For two, that would be <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. For one. And zero. <laughs> so we now have some building blocks, some pieces, some different types of throws, and we can start to combine them and mix them together. So uh, remember I said that when we were doing four, they stayed on the same side, right? Yeah. This is always, the, the throw is for each of these throws is called four. It is the type of throw that you do when you juggle four balls. Let's say we, we're getting bored of just same thing, and we want balls to cross over. So how can we do that? So let's set up the same thing we have here. And the ball. Okay. So it is the red balls. The red balls turn next, and it would normally go here. But we don't want to do that. We want to go somewhere over here. So it can land in any three spots. Can't go here, there's a ball there. Can't go here, there's a ball there. But this spot is free. So let's go over there. Oops. Okay. And then green is next. If we're just uh, going up from the bottom here, so green is next. Green normally would have gone here. But it can't, because red just landed there. So if, I apologize if you're red-green colorblind. This will be very confusing. <laughs> the, uh, I need to use red and green. I just have a metal. Uh, so this, uh, here. the green one wants to go here, but it can't. The red ball has just landed in my hand. Uh, so it could go out into the future somewhere, but let's have it swap places so that we have two balls that switch over. So let's find the first available place. Oh, there's this one. Because the red was going to go there, but it's not now. That space is free. So let's make the green open over here. And then if everything has worked out correctly, then we should be able to continue. Let nothing happen. So what have we done here? We have a red going like that, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five beats, right? A throw that is thrown and then thrown again five beats later. It is also the throw as if you were juggling five balls. So I, I can't juggle five balls, but I can throw five balls. It would look something like that. So those high crossing throws. Uh, and then on the green side, we have three. So we were in the middle of our fours, four, 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 five, three. So five is a high crossing throw, three is a low crossing throw, four, 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 four. So let's do four colors. Okay, let's do uh, yellow will cross high, and green will cross low. In three, two, one. Cool. <laughs> All right. Let's do it again. Uh, the colors might be different this time. I'll go the other direction. Uh, blue will cross high. Yellow will cross low. In three, two, one. Bad. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Um, also worth noticing the uh, odd throws cross. Even throws always stay on the same side. Mm -hmm. 
you useful to notice. Um, so this is this is the start of this notation, but uh, it turns out there's an easier way to represent this that is very pleasing to programmers. So we can take uh, let's take this exercise that we did. Here. Okay. So we were okay. we were uh, working on this problem, and remember, we needed to know where the next free spaces were, so that we could figure out where can we throw next. It didn't really matter which side we were on, because the timing takes care of that. If, if you want to land in this row, you have to land here, because that's where a catch is. The, the dots are throws, and the, the blank spaces are catches. If you want to land on this row, it has to be in this hand. So we don't really need to worry about the hands. The math will take care of that. So we can simplify this to just an infinite number of empty spaces going off in, in time. And each of these spaces is uh, whether we have a ball in that hand already. So if we're juggling three balls, we'll have one, one, two, three balls. And that's all we know. We've got, like, this is a, this is a snapshot in time, like, here. So then we need to figure out what we can do next. Well. We can throw the first ball in the chain to any of these open spots. So let's keep it simple. Let's throw a three. Remember from here, a three is just this normal throw when you're juggling three balls. So we'll throw a three, which means this goes away from here and shows up here. And so we end up with the same thing again, right? We've done a throw, and we're back where we started. And as long as we keep throwing threes, then we stay with those three x's. But we can throw something else. We could throw, let's say, a four. Remember, four is a medium throw on the same side. It does not cross. So if we threw a four, that would be Four, so we have x, x. empty space. So this one lands over there. So that's a four. We can make a finite state diagram out of this. This is where the programmers uh, start getting excited. So <laughs> let's say we have our x, 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 and we can throw a three. And as long as we throw a three, we stay at that node on the diagram. But let's throw a four. So now we are at <coughs> x, x, and then we could do a 2, which would take this here, 1, 2, and put it there, and that would be x, x, x. So we can actually just go move it right back. So we're throwing 4, oh, oh, the 2s, they're so small that sometimes you don't even double them. Do this. Uh, so we are juggle, 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 four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two. We just discovered a new juggling pattern by writing stuff. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, so it turns out that as you fill in this diagram, any closed loop on the diagram is a juggleable pattern. So let's see what we can find. Uh, let's try, let's do, let's stay over here, and let's not close the gap right away. Let's do another four and see where it leads us. Here, with another four. Okay. Like that. And then we can close up the gap with a one. So that brings us back here. And remember that a one is this quick hand across. 
So we have a new loop for for one that we can keep going around. And that's going to be four, uh, medium, same side, four on the other side, and then a one. Remember, the hands alternate. Four, four, one. 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 This pattern was discovered on paper by jugglers uh, in the 1970s or 1980s. They found it on here. No juggler had tried it previously. Um, so there's one other uh, fun thing I can show you about the diagram, which is, uh, so people ask me some, sometimes, what is the use of this? And I would say that this speaks uh, a misunderstanding of juggling. <laughs> but um, the, there's a, a juggling t-shirt that says, uh, doing, the, uh, doing the unnecessary the hard way. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a use if you're a juggler, um, which is that jugglers sometimes try to create uh, juggling patterns for music. And if you're trying to match up with music, you want to be in certain places at certain times, and you want to take a certain amount of time to get there. So let's see if, that, if this can help us with that. There's a pattern that I showed you earlier. It's called the shower. And this is a, a common juggling pattern. And uh, sometimes you want to transition into it, so you're going here, and then later you want to be here. So here's what that transition typically looks like. Did you see the awkward pause? Mm -hmm. There's juggle, 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 pause. Okay. Juggle, 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 pause. And that's fine, maybe. But maybe you want something a little more fluid. So uh, it turns out that this pattern, the shower, is 5-1 in this notation. So uh, it is, let's look at this over here. So uh, one, second. Uh, okay. So 5-1. So there it is. It's looping around, but it's off in space. How do we get there? Well, what we might want to do is we might want to, from uh, from here, from here, okay. from here, we just want to throw a five. That's what I tried. That's where we want to be doing five, so let me throw a five. So, oh no, five, and that gives me this, this, skip to here. Uh, but I can't throw a one. There's already a ball in that hand. So I, I can't do it. The balls will collide. So I'll do the next best thing. Maybe I'll throw uh, a two because I can close that uh, up. So, okay, let's be here. So that's a two. So that is here, here. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, yes, two. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So now I can do another five. And we'll get over here. Ah, now I can do my one. Right? I did a five, did a two, did another five, and now I have a free space here where I can do one, five, one, five, one, and now I've gotten into my pattern. Uh, remember that two, sometimes you just hold it. That's the awkward pause right there. We found it in the diagram. Uh, so that's that's me going three, 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 five, two, five, one, five, one, five, one. Three, three, three. Two, uh, but notice something interesting. This this node is already on the graph. It's here, so you can actually redraw this as two, uh, then this goes away, and uh, the five one stretches out like this. So once we find it on the graph, we realize, oh, there's there's another way to get there. For years, jugglers were going the long way around. But once they did up the diagram, they realized there's a shortcut. So what does that look like? That's three, 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 four, five, one, five, one, five, one. 
<laughs> so it's uh, it's a little unintuitive because it's the left hand. I'm, I'm throwing all of these high throws with my right hand, but it starts with a high throw on the left, which I think is why people maybe didn't think of it. But it's this nice smooth transition that you don't even notice. So this is a pretty cool use of this, and you can finish filling in the diagram and you get something that looks like this. So this is this is the full diagram for three balls for a maximum height of five, but you can do it for any size that you want if you have a fast enough computer. Um, and so uh, this is just a, a little bit of the sort of some of the stuff that I was learning to make this app. And we can go back to the app now that we've seen some of the notations. Sorry. Two weeks. <laughs> um, this, this app took me about two years, oh. like on and off. I mean, not not full time, but I've been playing with it for a long time. So now that we know some of the notation, we can play with it a bit. So here's three. Here's um, four, four, one, which we found on the diagram. The two side throws and the one cross. Um, here's a bunch of threes. Four, five, one, five, one, five, one. Uh, it does not work. Why not? Uh, live debugging. <laughs> oh, uh, it won't loop back around. I need to find another transition out of it. Uh, two. Okay, I'm not going to debug this live. Um, debugging juggling is really weird. <laughs> um, there's no breakpoints. <laughs> Maybe in space, uh, but we can start playing with it. Um, so the highest throw would be nine. So that's nine balls, each thrown to a height of nine. But after nine, we're all programmers. What comes after nine? No, A. <laughs> so A is 10. And then. A is 10, B is 11, P is something, oh. no. <laughs> Z is 30, 35, 36, 35, I think. Um, so now we have letters, uh, and it just it just keeps going up. But when we have letters, we can spell words. What's yes. the real record? So um, you, you should go and look on YouTube for a video from a Wired magazine called Why Juggling 14 Balls is Almost Impossible. Um, the, if, you, uh, if you look at a pattern like the fun one, so each of these is, is higher and they all kind of peak in the middle, you can see that each, so this is a, a 9, a 7, a 5, a 3, and a 1. And so that's that's the 9, that's the 7, that's the 5. The higher the number, the, the more higher, they're higher by a higher amount each time, right? Because the separation is bigger here than here. So each time you add one ball, it's exponentially harder to juggle. You start needing... Uh, precision and strength and speed that are like like major league sports level, and so there are not that many people working on this, but there are a few people who can do nine, ten, eleven, somewhere around there, and it sort of stops around thirteen or fourteen. That's probably around the human limit. Uh, but on the moon, you could... <laughs> uh, so so we can. The nice thing is that the math works. We can put in any number we want. In this case, this pattern is cool because I can keep putting uh, subsequent odd numbers. B, C, D, F, H, I, oops, D, H, I, J, K, L. And just, and just keep going up. And you can really see, especially if I speed it up, that they all... So that's a really pretty one. But um, we can also spell words uh, because we have letters. So I know that F is juggleable. <laughs> and I put it in the dictionary on the computer and um, looked at all the words that are juggleable. And the, the highest one in the dictionary is Zulalit in English anyway. I found to find out what the highest Spanish word is. But there's, that's Zulalit. It's a 24 ball pattern. And uh, when I speed it up, you can kind of see the shapes. There's stuff going here and then here and the high ones. So that's just kind of fun. Um, I have no idea where we are on time. I'm happy to talk more about this or about some of the code, which I think is not that interesting because it was more, you know, once I figured out the math stuff, code, yeah. um, but I'm, I'm happy to talk about uh, some of the code or take questions or 
whatever we want to go from here. Your choice. ¿Quieren ver código? No, en lo que le estaba fallando es que estaba trabajando en el setup, colocando todos los números en pares en el punto. No puedes colocar todos los números en dos, por eso se llama. He's wondering why he, in the previous example, you were using odd numbers, and then you put a, you placed a, an even number, and it broke. Oh, so he's yes. wondering why. No, no, la verdad no es que era para que todas las versiones eran con un par de segundos, y por eso le fallaba, que él decía que no puede enviar, ¿no? He's not wondering, he's saying. Oh, is he debugging? Yeah. Yes. It's all right. Yes? Yeah. What do I need? Remove the two. And I think I need a four here. And then, oh, you didn't even know. Right. So there we can see. Transitions when I see some jugglers get some more items one well, like they're doing three items, sure. And then there's four, and then a fifth, yeah. And then um, come back, like, so, to if you want to add in objects, you need a free hand, and free hand is a zero. Mm -hmm. So, if you can find a pattern that has a zero in it, then you've got a free hand. So, let me see if I can do this. Um, so, if I go, let's see, it will be a four. Four, four, zero. So it will be empty hand, right? Oops. I'll snap this if I can snap. Hardest part of the demo right there. <laughs> right? Empty hand? I can use that empty hand. <laughs> So yeah, you could use this for that kind of transition. Uh, have you ever seen someone juggling and eating apples? <laughs> that's a two. When you take a bite of the apple, you think it's an apple, but that's no, messy. Uh, when you take a bite of the apple, that's a two. That's the, the hold. So that would be uh, so. That's where you can use the math to figure out, you know, silly things. <coughs> the other fun thing is remember that. In this notation, the hands are fixed. Uh, there's other notation, there are expansions. This is very distressing. How do you do the notation for when you cross hands? Yeah, so there is a, a notation. Let me see if any of these devices are online. Um, So there's a body move notation where, so uh, you have these symbols. So BOL is the space uh, both legs, BOL. AL is oh. arm leg, so that's an arm and a leg. So that's that's this here. Uh, AC is arm and cranium, so here. And OP is opposite side of the body, so like uh, you know, here to here or here, something like that. And then you can you can combine these together to make uh, acopal or apacapaca, apalapala. The body wrap, fill, and catch. So that's probably like here. Oops. Here, here. For example, so that you can that notation is totally separate from this this notation I've been showing you is called site swap because the In here, the sites of the ball swap over. Sites swap. Um, but yeah, so you can use some of those notations to do things like this. The fun thing about this, this is a pattern called Mills Mess. And the site swap of this pattern is three. 
This is exactly the same as this in terms of timing. If you watch uh, the blue ball, right two, three, left two, three, right two, three, left two, three, right two, three, left two, three, right two, three, left. Uh, here's a fun one that I like. This is called Boston Mess. And that one uh, is also three. <laughs> oh, it's really hard. To start. Um, so the, there are there are these separate things that are uh, totally uh, orthogonal to each other, where you can play with the body throws. Like I, I can do that, and that was still three, or that, or if you're doing uh, four, four, one. That one, the hand across, can go anywhere. So I can put the one, uh, let's see, or let's see if I can do it in here. Nope. Yeah. But in theory, a solution exists. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about um, Questions. the specifics of the Swift stuff. Um, I, mean, I even have slides of it, but like, it's, compared to the juggling part, it's not, I, I don't think it's all that interesting. It's, you know, you can represent maybe a beat that has a direction, whether it's crossing over or same side, and then uh, you can say, oh cool, an, an empty is a zero, held is a two, and a toss or a height, and which direction it's going, you can start to build up some logic. So a site swap with the sequence uh, has an array of beats, and we can ask it things like, what is your highest throw, and what is your period, how long until it repeats? And we can use those to set up the, uh, like the viewport and scene kit. How do we know how big to go here? How do we know to zoom in when we do this? We ask for the highest throw, and you know, how tall it is on screen. Um, so all of this is done using uh, one of my goals. So I, I showed you the other app, um, Jugglebot. No, find Jugglebot. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I juggle. When, um, when you when you drag this to the left and slow it down, it goes because they're just playing the frames slower with more time between them. But I wanted mine to be really smooth. And so the way I did that is uh, when you type in a number, we calculate uh, what each ball is going to be doing, the whole path of the ball through the pattern, and then uh, construct um, a series of parabolas. So each of, each of these arcs, when, you know, a basic um, a Newtonian motion, uh, a ballistic motion, is uh, right, a parabola here, and then a little parabola here. And then so the, the position of any ball at any time is its position along a series of parabolas stuck end to end. Um, and I'm um, I guess one slightly fun thing in the uh, Swift side is I wanted to be able to say, uh, okay, so I've got maybe a throw that's three beats and then a carry and then a throw that's two beats. So we have these parabolas where Really, this is a separate thing, and this is a separate thing, and I wanted to be able to store this and say at any timestamp. So that what, when I'm, so I'm using um, scene kit, and when scene kit says I've got a, I'm rendering a new frame at this time, I want to say okay, where is this ball right now? So where are all the balls now at this point? So what I can do is um, I built uh, let me just show you. It's kind of fun. Is, uh, so I have a little struct of shifting, and this rep represents an item in an array and how many places it is shifted by. So uh, when we say, when we're, we're looking for this here, what we really have is, uh, this is an array, so 0, 1, 2 items in the array, and the, uh, the, the struct representing the parabola is here. 
Um, and then this here says, uh, on that same parabola, uh, they're, um, they're structs, they're <coughs> value, uh, value types. But I'm actually that parabola from one beat ago. And then here is the same parabola from two beats ago. So when I say, hey, give me the time at uh, you know, uh, 1.3 seconds, uh, or 1.3 um, beats, then I'll go into the array, well, okay, so 1.3 would round up to 0, 1, 1.3 rounds up to 2. So it's somewhere in here. That parabola, oh, okay, that's actually a parabola from two beats ago, given the y position for the x value plus those two beats. So, um, yeah, so the, it, I, I made a, um, like a ring array uh, type, like a ring buffer, uh, so that you have a small array, but you can index this way or this way, and you don't get out of bounds, it just loops. And so, um, so this is, uh, this is a ring array of shifted, uh, this is where it starts to get into, you know, boring detail position vendor thing that can tell me where a thing is at a time. You know, naming is hard. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a protocol because I, I have position vendors for balls and for held balls and for hands and you know a, a few different things that can move around in the juggling scene. Um, and then the balls, uh, so the, ball, the positions of all the balls are calculated, and then the hands uh, are uh, are put in afterwards. So I could turn off the juggler and the balls are just going by themselves. And then I have the little juggler model, and it's using. Um, I don't know if anyone has played with scene kit or other 3D animation. It uses uh, inverse kinematics, where you put the hand somewhere and then all the joints follow. And I have some very creepy video somewhere of, <laughs> of that going very wrong, where he's juggling, but like, like there's one where he's juggling and the hand just spins this way all oh. the way around. So it's, it's the scene kit inverse kinematics are not great, um, but I. I Managed to cobble them together and get them working. Um, yeah, I think we should uh, probably stop there, and I'm happy to chat if you want to talk about it more. Thanks. Yeah,